the need for speed. If you think of the Endorphin Pro as Maverick in the OG Top Gun, then the Endorphin Speed is Iceman, and it's gunning for the top daily trainer of 2024. Does it have what it takes? If by that you mean a plate? Hell yeah, and it's winged, of course. The Saucony Endorphin Speed is one of the most cherished daily trainers and took flight not too long ago. What makes this awesome is the combo of the Power Run PB foam and the winged plastic plate as you can see right here, just like in the previous version. And if you look closely, you'll notice it's ribbed for your pleasure. It helps keep things rigid. All right, that's enough. Let's keep this peachy. Like it or not, the plate is what takes this from being a good running shoe to a fantastic running shoe. So my question is, at this point, why would a brand ever make another daily trainer without a plate? Sure, you can save money without one, which is valid, but when it comes to performance, it's really hard to compete without a plate. I know you're saying, well, what about this shoe or that shoe? Let me know down in the comments which comparably spec non-plated running shoe you think is better than or equal to the endorphin speed. Now before you start scrounging around, let me give you the specs. The heel measures 36 millimeters and drops 8 millimeters at the toe. And for my size 8.5, it's fairly light at about 8.1 ounces or 232 grams. I think you'll be hard pressed to beat this challenge. It's really just my personal preference by the way. I suppose the better question is, when you have a shoe that performs as well as a Speed 4, do you really need a shoe rotation that also includes a separate long run shoe, recovery shoe, and a tempo shoe? I'll let you know what I think in just a bit, but first, let's talk fit. We're too close. Speed 4 is switching to guns. The Endorphin Speed 4 fits true to size, but not all true to size are the same. Saucony happens to make it exactly like how I want an 8.5 to feel. What's that? That means having no more than three quarters of a centimeter between my toes and the front of the shoe. I've seen people fit an entire thumbs width or more into that space. Personally, I think that's a half size too big because with more room, it's harder for me to get a good toe off. The upper works really well too. It's not overly cushioned, but it's not stripped down. The tongue is gusseted, perforated, and nicely padded. To my surprise, it's quite breathable all around. The only minor drawbacks are the laces themselves and these two nylon straps that serve as eyelets. It makes the already slippery and stretchy laces slide back and forth even more. You have to play with it a little to dial in the right tension. And anywhere that the laces rub up against, you start to get these little fuzzies. I got around it by tucking the excess lace into itself. Other than that, I like the overall design. It's kind of in your face with the colors and these fins here on the midsole. I think they really made an effort with the endorphin line. Ground speed, 830, I'm going for pace lock. The midsole of the Speed 4 is really where the afterburner starts. Truthfully, I was a little skeptical of Saucony after testing the Triumph. That midsole uses Power Run Plus. It felt too harsh and a little rubbery like a tire. But the Power Run PB in here is way better. I should have known because it's made of PBAX. It's noticeably softer and still provides a lot of response, as much or more than the higher stack Triumph. On a side note, they are releasing a new Triumph with Power Run PB, so look forward to that. Initially, I could feel the plate break in, but soon after it felt well cushioned, responsive, and very smooth. And I don't even think I felt the ground, if at all, which I prefer. Finally, the 8mm drop and the speed roll technology, which is Saucony's rocker design, felt just right in keeping my feet turning over like butter. Is this why I enjoy the Speed 4 so much? There is one more reason. I never really understood it till now, but between the foam and the plate, it's a shoe that can really lock into a pace. It feels like there's enough assistance underfoot to hold a pace without having to think. And that's why I love this daily trainer. It's also versatile. It's light and nimble enough to do speed work, and the natural roll through really just made the faster efforts feel a bit more effortless. And on my longest run to date, 13.1 miles with 40 minutes at goal marathon pace, it felt like there was just enough cushioning to handle that distance and time on my feet. For reference, that took me a little over two hours. Admittedly, my feet were pretty banged up after that, but my legs, they felt good the next day. I'd say the soreness was due to my inexperience, so I think the shoe could handle longer distances as long as your feet hold up. But at this point in my first marathon training block, I'm not convinced I could take it out for much longer than I did. Toward the end, I really started to fall back on my heels. It didn't feel unstable, but all I could think was, stay focused, man. You can't afford another injury. Maybe with a stiffer carbon plate, it would have been fine, but I still managed to keep the pace up through to the end. The outsole traction probably helped too. This new lattice design is pretty good, but I'd watch out for any sort of wet surfaces. The rubber is a little thin under the heel. After 15 miles, I did notice some wear on the outer edges. The durability seems pretty comparable to other shoes in the category. Tower, this is Speed 4, requesting a flyby. 
Like the sequel to Top Gun, the Endorphin Speed 4 really lived up to the hype for me. It's the first version of the Speed I've tried and I've really enjoyed it. Getting back to whether the Speed can reduce the need for a full shoe rotation, for the most part, I'd say yes. But as a newer runner, I think I need a little more cushioning and stability for the longer runs. For those of you who often run longer distances, I think you could definitely forget about carrying any other shoe in the car, unless you're headed to a race. So, if you're looking for a good wingman for your race day shoe, this could be it. Because if you can handle the distance, this can handle the speed. Ride a run and let's get it done.